Hello, my name is Rich Moscoso, Senior Field Applications Engineer with AVER Pro AV. And today I want to discuss with you our AVER NDI cameras and USB. If you're not familiar with our NDI cameras, uh, they, there's currently three available, and there's a fourth one on the way, but they are the PTZ 310N, 330N, and the TR 311HN. Just note that uh, sometimes we get the question, uh, do these cameras support full NDI? And the answer is no. Uh, we support NDI HX and NDI HX2. We also support you know, the, the NDI 5 uh, apps that are available as well. So before you get started, you probably want to do a quick visit to our AVER Pro AV website. Just go to averusa.com, click on AVER Pro AV. The tile will show up. Uh, you'll click on that. It'll take you straight to the Pro AV website. From there, you can click uh, on support and you can find a lot of different documentation and videos and quick start videos, uh, how to's regarding um, setting up our cameras, either an NDI or, or working with TriCaster or wondering how to connect with Zoom and NDI, uh, even with, with OBS, right? Uh, so a lot of good information here as well as firmware, uh, the latest firmware software that's available, like the IP Cam Utility that we'll be talking about here. Also, if you go to our frequently asked uh, knowledge base here, you can actually do a search on, on, say, USB extenders. So this will come in handy as well as far as a compatibility list for the AVER Pro AV cameras. So these are the, the NDI cameras, the three PTZ 310N, 330N, the TR311HN, and then as mentioned, we do have this one coming out soon, the TR323NV2. He's a little bit different. He, he It does still have the same three auto tracking modes, but you will notice that it is a 4K camera. So it has a 4K, the ability to output 4K. Uh, and, and it is a 21x optical with 12x digital as well. It does support PoE Plus as well as USB 3.0, and it's a Type B. We are also working on some beta firmware currently that also has gesture control. So, um, in today's video, we're going to talk about you know why is there no USB video output from my Aver NDI camera. So that's a, a question we get asked a lot, and the idea is that once you purchase a, an NDI camera, the idea is that you, probably the first thing you're going to want to do is put it on the network. And there's a couple different ways to put it on the network. But there are instances where people just want to take the camera out. They see, they look at the back of the camera, they see it has a USB output, they connect it to their technology because they just want to see how the auto tracking works and see how well the optics are and, and how well the, the motors and everything work as far as uh, tracking somebody. And they'll notice, hey, I, I don't see any video output. But, um, and they're scratching their heads, they're wondering why. Um, and the, the reason being is that um, when NDI is enabled, the USB output video stream is disabled. And this is by design. So what the issue that you'll see is that if you're running something like Capture Share to see the USB output, you'll actually see the camera, but you won't see any video. Or you go to Device Manager and you actually see the camera listed. So my TR313 actually has NDI uh, enabled in the camera, but this would be exactly the same scenario if it was a TR311HN. So just keep that in mind. Um, and then also we are in discussions about having NDI disabled from the factory. Uh, so that way, you know, we don't have to run through a couple different ways to, to disable the NDI video. So this little chart here just kind of shows you that when 
you the camera is in NDI mode, uh, the USB output will be disabled, right? And in, in other modes, this kind of shows you if you have USB plus streaming, you're going to have all your outputs available. All right, so there are two ways to, to either check or disable NDI mode or, or go back and forth between NDI on or off. The, the simplest, easiest way is using the HDMI output. Just connect the HDMI output to a monitor and then use your camera remote to navigate to the system selection and go to NDI and then just select off. Once you select off, the camera will reboot. It will ask you, to, do you want to reboot? You say yes, and it takes roughly about a minute and a half for that camera to, to reboot and come back. If you do not have a monitor available, uh, you could also take the either the HDMI or SDI output to a converter and then connect it to your computer to also see that same on-screen display menu. And you can do the same thing uh, that way. Uh, while you, you're on the on-screen display, you can also adjust the network settings from there uh, and change the, um, the network to either uh, static or change, change the IP address from, from the default IP address to one that's going to match your network infrastructure. Or maybe you do want to enable DHCP, you can also do it from the on-screen display as well. The other way is, you know, via network, same subnet. So if your infrastructure, if your, where you're going to be hooking up this camera is actually running on the same 192.168.1 subnet, then it's, it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you just connect everything together, right? Through a switch, ideally, because you're going to be adding other components. Um, just make sure it's a good quality, you know, Cat 5e, Cat 6 cable going from the camera to the to the gigabit switch. You could also this could be a PoE plus switch as well. But the idea is that you get everything on the same subnet connected, and then it's really straightforward. You just open up a Chrome browser. Please use a Chrome browser, and then just type in that IP address. This is the default IP address of the camera, so it's 192.168.1.168. Uh, once you type that in, you will see a sign-in screen uh, or a login, and the default login and password is admin and admin. As soon as you type that in, it's going to ask you to change it. So you're going to change it. Uh, please write down the new login and password, and then um, type that in, and what you should see is an actual... Um, web login UI and I'll show you that here right right like here it'll look just like this if I open up here and do that and then bam oh, this is this is what you're gonna see uh, as soon as you get to that uh, web UI of the camera and then once you get there you want to go you're gonna want to go to video and audio and change the video output to USB plus streaming so once you get there here, you just go to video and audio, and you'll notice that the video mode is set to NDI, which is uh, by default set that way with our NDI cameras. So if you do want the USB output to work or to actually you know, do some other tests that way, then you would need to select this to USB plus streaming. It says, do you want to reboot? You say, okay, and the camera begins to reboot. So I'll close that for now. So this is what the TR311HN looks like. And then for the PTZ310N and the 330N, uh, you just select USB plus streaming. And it will also ask you to reboot as well. So what happens if you're on a different subnet, right? Uh, they don't match what the, the, the um, or the camera doesn't match what the network that you're on. So... What we have is this Aver IP Cam Utility. It's currently for Windows only. So if you go to our ProAV website and then select the software tab, um, you can download it for free. There are some steps that need to be uh, followed for this. So it's, just, it's really straightforward once you open it. 
uh, in the upper left here, you'll see a selection or the ability to select which uh, NIC or which network interface card that you want to use for uh, to do the search. So you select it, the hardwired, right, the one that's connected to your camera network, and then select search. Once you select search, um, this should actually populate with the camera, even if you're on a different subnet. So even if, say, your infrastructure is like a 10 dot something, you should see the camera show up with a 192.168.1.168, the default. Um, step three, uh, enter in the, the camera's login credentials. So again, if it's a fresh, brand new camera, this would be admin, admin. But let's say this was at location A first, they, they changed something in the, you know, they, they gained access to the web UI and they changed the login and password. Then this is where you would have to put in that new login and password here. Uh, over here, uh, step four, this is where you can actually, you know, select either DHCP or you can actually select static. So if you do want to change it to be a static IP address, you select static, type in the IP address, the subnet mask, uh, and if you happen to have gateway and the DNS, then go ahead and put that in as well. Once that's all filled in, hit apply. And what you should see here, step six, is you should see the progress bar begin to, to show up. And then once that's done, it takes maybe, I don't know, 10 seconds. Uh, it will do another search. It should find the same camera with the new IP address. So this kind of shows you what uh, what that looks like, right? So if you were the uh, the subnet that you're on is like uh, 192.168.0.112, uh, you want the camera to then be on that dot zero because of the the way the subnet's set up. Okay, if you're on a different network or a different subnet, I should say, and you're running with a Mac OS, uh, it's a little more work. Um, obviously, using the HDMI output is the fastest and quickest way. Um, but you can also connect the cameras or the camera to, to the switch as well. Um, and then the idea is that you would then change the IP address of the Mac's NIC momentarily um, just to match what this is, right? So we're just doing a change on the Mac to match this, and the sole purpose is to gain access to the web UI using a Chrome browser on your Mac. Once you do that, so like say you, you changed it to, to 192.168.1.115, right? A quick check, so once you change it, is go to Finder, look for Terminal, click on the Terminal app, and then just type ping space 192.168.1.168 just to see that you have connection from from your mac to the camera once you see that you should you, you should get a return of zero percent loss and that tells you that they are both devices are seeing each other and then from there it would be the same process of uh you know typing in admin admin changing it and then going to the web ui to to change the IP or to actually select NDI or USB plus streaming. And this kind of just shows you what that looks like here, kind of. So the original IP address, you want this camera, this camera, the defaults here. You're gonna change the Mac to momentarily to 192.168.1.115. Go to the Chrome browser, make your changes change your camera's IP address to what you want it to be, whether DHCP or um, static. Once you do that, then go back to your Mac and change it back to what the original IP address was. So that's it, we covered a couple different topics. One, USB is not seen on an NDI camera, and a little bit about network, networking the camera into your environment. Thank you and good luck.